<laughs> Thank you. Give yourself a hand. This is wonderful. You have to put up with my voice, unfortunately, which has uh, decided to take a little vacation of its own. Uh, I was in bed most of the weekend, and I kept saying, oh no, oh no, that's the only thing I said. What am I going to do on Monday? But uh, thank God it's, it's come back a little bit, and we have a show to do uh, down at Rutgers uh, Stadium in a little while, so um, I'm, i got to conserve it for that as well. I have to tell you, just so you know, I want to thank Mary Ann for Oregon. I know a lot of people did, but she contacted me, and she got me here. And the work that goes into organizing something like this is immense. So many people. And intimidation. Intimidation. How dare we come out here and speak the truth? How dare we? They threatened. They're going to show up, they're going to blanket Morristown with posters and they're going to disrupt and they're, you better not come, you better disinvite Bob Grant, you better disinvite Steve Malsberg. That's how the street activist, community activists work. Intimidation. And we will not be intimidated. We had a little victory over the weekend. Could we, could we start up the first known chant of bye bye van? Bye bye van. Bye bye van. Bye bye van. Bye bye van. Van Jones, the, uh, the self proclaimed communist who called Republicans a very nasty name, who said that white polluters and environmentalists were directing poison to the minority community, who as a whole list he signed on as a 9-11 truther, which meant he wanted Elliot Spitzer to investigate that George Bush and the government knew about 9-11. And he resigned finally over the weekend in the dead of night. because we weren't intimidated. The New York Times, the Washington Post, ABC, CBS, and NBC did a total of zero stories on Van Jones until he resigned. Star right on down the list. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, that's why they're coming after me, they're coming after Beck, they're coming after Grant, they're coming after talk radio, and we will not be intimidated. <laughs> this fascination that the, and by the way, don't think for one moment, I hear the pundits now saying, well, how did the vetting process work? How did they miss this guy? They didn't miss this guy. Van Jones is Barack Obama. John Bolton, the science czar, is Barack Obama. Let me tell you a little bit about John Holden. He wrote a textbook with two other people where they talked about controlling the population through mandatory abortions, adding sterilants to the drinking water and other foods. That's mandatory sterilization. Uh, he is just another czar who is Barack Obama. Cass Sunstein, the regulatory czar. He supports changing the policy, get this, as it exists now, if you decide to leave your organs for someone else to, 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 to inherit, you sign a little thing on your driver's license. Cass Sunstein, who is Barack Obama, wants to reverse it. You would have to sign something saying, don't take my organs, otherwise they would take your organs. 
Wait, that's nothing. So the, it would be presumed consent. You would have to sign otherwise, the opposite of the way things are now. Cass Sunstein also believes that people should be able to sue on behalf of animals and that animals should have the same exact rights as people. And he also wants to ban hunting. All hunting. Cass Sunstein is Barack Hussein Obama. Harold Poe. State Department legal advisor. This one's a piece of work. Um, he believes that in many instances, Sharia law can be used in the United States of America. And he believes that international law trumps our laws here in the United States. Harold Cole is Barack Obama. Mark Lloyd. Mark Lloyd's the one who's going to be coming after me. Mark Lloyd is the diversity czar on the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. Mark Lloyd has a paper trail of writings. He favors the fairness doctrine. He believes, get this now, in doing away with commercial radio. My station, WOR, which by the way, Four to six every day, Monday through Friday. Yeah. A shameless plug, I know. He believes in punishing commercial radio, actually driving them out of business. If my, my station's operating budget is $2 million, any station's operating budget, the station owner would have to pay that same amount in a fine, doubling his expenses and give the money to public radio. That would wipe out commercial radio. It would kill talk radio, and Christian radio, and conservative radio, and Mark Lloyd is Barack Hussein Obama. So when they say, oh, how did Van Jones get by the vetting process? It must have been a terrible mistake. <laughs> he has surrounded himself with Van Joneses. He has surrounded a communist in the White House. Did not bother Barack Obama. It intrigued Barack Obama because Barack Obama, at his core, is, in my view, a Marxist. You know, how many times have you heard it said that we are at a crossroads? That this is the most important time in American history? I mean, I said it during Clinton's second election, during Bush's first and second elections. I mean, I've said it over and over. But ladies and gentlemen, we have never. You know, 4th of July, I wrote a piece about this. I was watching the fireworks with my son's Little League team and his teammates at the, the coach's house in my town of Fairlawn. And I was, I was trying to forget I was listening to the music, the patriotic music, watching the fireworks, but I couldn't, I couldn't fully forget. I tried to make believe everything was gonna be all right. I tried to say, oh, you know what, maybe you're overreacting. As I'm watching the kids with the sparklers and they're celebrating, they don't. But folks, never in my lifetime, and probably never, have we had a man in the White House who fundamentally despises everything that's great about America. That's why, that's why, first of all, and I'll say this right now, I've been a little disappointed in, 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 in uh, Chris Christie. I, I've given him invites to my show almost, almost weekly. And I got a feeling the same people who ran Giuliani's presidential campaign into the ground, some of them are involved in the, uh, the, court, the Christie campaign, and I'm just hoping he's not avoiding conservative radio because that would be a huge mistake. But nonetheless, even if he doesn't come on, we have to send a message to Washington. And the message to Washington in November is, Christie beats Corzine, and the Republican wins in Virginia, and Obama gets the message. We must defeat...